So spring is finally upon us, and what that means is that some of our winter fragrances are gonna have to take a back seat. Now, I personally love the autumn and the winter when it comes to fragrances because it gives me the opportunity to wear some of my bolder statement makers, if you will, and I can't necessarily do that in the springtime, but you get to wear some of the brighter, more citrusy, aquatic, floral, olfactive creations, and there's a place for those fragrances too, and I personally love them, but these are 10 fragrances that I'm gonna miss wearing this spring and summer, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I get on with this list and I let you know about these 10 fragrances that I'm personally going to miss wearing this spring and summer, these are all cold weather fragrances. I do wanna start things off by mentioning that if you are a fan of fragrance related content, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Make sure to hit that bell icon so you can be notified whenever I do upload future videos. And of course, give this video a thumbs up if you take something of value from today's episode. Now, just going on and jumping into the list, the first one I wanna talk about is a fragrance of which I am the creator creative director. This one by Navitus Parfum is called Imperial. Now Imperial definitely reminds me of the fall and winter because it's chocolate and orange. There's also a touch of suede leather in the base. This is a beautiful gourmand mouth-wateringly good fragrance composed by Francis Kirkjohn and Jerome de Marino, two very accomplished perfumers. I love this one so much and I also love wearing Emblaze, part of the same collection. Different perfumer but that one is more of a spicy taste and then um, I just you know think I'm gonna have to put these on the shelf and kind of tuck them away for a few months and then I'll start wearing Away, A-W-E-I-G-H, which is a citrusy offering from the same collection. I think it's perfect for the spring and summer, but this one is gonna have to take a back seat momentarily. The next fragrance I'm gonna miss wearing is by Killian Paris, and it's called Intoxicated. Now this is a really dark yet sweet fragrance. People compare it to the original Amen by Thierry Mugler. So it kind of has that caramel, ethyl malto patchouli vibe. It's so good but it's one of those fragrances that in my opinion do really well in the winter time because it also is very long lasting. You're gonna get about nine to 10 hours longevity from it. Not necessarily what you're gonna need in the spring and summer. You want something that's a little bit fresher. Roses on Ice is a great fragrance if you like the smell of cucumber. And then Vodka on the Rocks is a great fragrance. Very clean, crisp, elegant, and airy at the same time. So that's a great fragrance for the summertime. But Killian, you know, they make a lot of really dark, heavy, rich, you know, winter-based offerings, and Intoxicated is one of the top ones. Of course, by Carolina Herrera, there's also CH for Men Privé. This one is dark and spicy and a little bit leathery at the same time, with a good amount of sweetness that you're also going to find in the original CH for Men, but the Privé version is darker, spicier, and it's precisely these types of designer and niche fragrances that I will forego wearing as the weather starts to get a little bit warm out. Now, in terms of Carolina Herrera. They just came out with a new one, Bad Boy Cobalt. That one seems like it has some brighter elements to it, so I'll probably wear that over the next few months because I actually do enjoy that one. I think that one is a solid release. The next fragrance is also a designer by Jean-Paul Gaultier, Ultramall. Now, Ultramall is one of the darker offerings from the brand and it also does really good in terms of performance. I get about 10 hours on my skin. Now this one is gonna be mostly pear and vanilla. Definitely darker than the original Le Mans, especially if you're talking one of the more recent formulations, people kind of complain that it doesn't last as long as the originals or you know the ones from many years ago, but Ultramall is definitely a heavier fragrance the pear, the vanilla, some dark patchouli elements. And so this is one of those fragrances you can expect 10 hours of longevity, but it's probably going to be overkill in the hotter weather. And this is one of my favorites from this brand. It's dark, it's boozy, it has the agarwood, it has a cognac accord in here, and it's very ambery too, but there's just no place for it in the springtime, in my opinion, unless it's a really cold spring day and you're gonna spend most of it outdoors. <laughs> This one by Electimus London is called Amber Aquilaria. Now they did just release two new fragrances um, 
Patchouli of the Underworld and Persephone's Patchouli. I think those have some really nice spring elements about them. Patchouli is one of those ingredients that can be either autumn or spring to me. And so I definitely look forward to wearing those a lot, but this one is definitely gonna, you know, have to take a back seat over the next few months here. And the next fragrance here is very, very dark. I almost stopped wearing this like midwinter because of how dark it is, but there's a certain magic to it. If you do like one spray, or two sprays and you will, I assure you, you will continue to smell this throughout the whole day because of how dark and smoky this fragrance is. By Gucci, it's called A Midnight Stroll, part of the Alchemist's Garden composed by master perfumer Alberto Morias. Very dark, smoky, a lot of birch tar in here. So if you're familiar with that ingredient, you know how it has a tendency of getting really dark. That's kind of what you can expect from a midnight stroll. Of course, there's also Side Effect by Inicio Parfum. This one is rum, cinnamon, vanilla, a little bit of saffron in the dry down, giving you like a leathery vibe. Pedione, which is a very sort of romantic, pheromone-like, musky ingredient, but it's really that spicy, cinnamon and rum combination that really makes this a darker offering. Perfect for the autumn, not so great for the spring. Probably in the springtime, I'll be wearing Oud for Happiness, High Frequency from the same brand, even Rehab. Those are all amazing. And Side Effect is probably my favorite Initio, but it's a fragrance that I Un, you know, undoubtedly love to wear in the colder weather. And then this one is like one of the longest lasting fragrances in my collection ever. And by Maison Francis Kirkjohn, this one is Oud Strike de Parfum. So this fragrance is super long lasting. The Oud, the ambery balsamic qualities in there, the resins are just so rich and dense. And this is one of those fragrances, even if you smell the atomizer, it's going to <laughs> cling to your nose hairs for hours and hours and hours. And you're to be smelling it five hours later as though you're wearing it and so it's a really strong fragrance you've been warned the next fragrance again that sort of honey tobacco dark vibe which i often associate with the autumn and the winter time and it's just not really a, a pairing that works specifically well in the spring or the summer. This one by Parfum de Marly is called Herod. And I think there's a lot of Marly fragrances that I'm not going to wear in the colder weather. I'm not gonna be wearing Kalan, I'm not gonna be wearing Carlisle, I'm not gonna be wearing Oajan, which is amazing for the autumn, and I'm certainly not gonna be wearing Herod. As much as I love those fragrances, in their place, I'll wear Sedley, I'll wear Galloway, I'll wear Greenly. So there are a lot of fresh offerings from Marley, but Marley as a house creates very long lasting fragrances. Certain brands in the industry, you can expect them to consistently release long lasting fragrances. Montal is one of them, Mancera is another, Marley is another. And of course that brings us to the last one. Truth be told, there's like 200 fragrances that I'm gonna miss wearing just because I wear all different kinds of fragrances. I wear like three different fragrances a day and I'm always testing fragrances. So I encounter a lot of fragrances I love, a lot of fragrances that I'm not particularly crazy about. This next brand, for example, so many from this brand that I love, including the one that I'm getting ready to mention. And of course the brand is Tom Ford, but there are some that I don't particularly love. Uh, some of the new ones I love, you know, um, Rose de Chine. Didn't really care so much for Rose de Russie, um, but this fragrance is one of my favorites of all time. I purchased it so many years ago and I've held on to my bottle and it's just an amazing fragrance. Noir de Noir by Tom Ford. I love this stuff. That chocolatey patchouli, very dark and romantic. It's kind of like a Valentine's Day fragrance, right? Because it has that chocolatey vibe, but then there's also the rose in there that's really sensual. And you know, in February, it's still rather cold. But as of the time that I'm shooting this video, today's date is April 2nd. So it's getting to be quite warm out. The sun is finally out today. So these are 10 fragrances that I will probably not wear for a few months. And it makes me sad just thinking about it, but you know, I'll get back around to them. I'll make sure that I store them very nicely away from fluctuating temperatures and they're not going to go bad. Some of these I've had for, you know, nine or 10 years now. So anyways, 
Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me today. What fragrances are you going to miss wearing this spring? What are some of your favorite autumn and winter fragrances that you're probably not going to wear over the next few months? Leave a comment down below. Always love the interaction. Also, if you enjoyed this video and if you took something of value from today's episode, make sure to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, make sure to hit that bell so you can be notified whenever I do upload future videos. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. Love you. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.